In today's video, we will review the following paper, a topological filtering of dynamic functional brain network and full informative chronotomic, a novel data-driven thresholding scheme based on orthogonal minimal spanning tree. Whew. Okay, so um, that's the title, but what it is really, it's a, it's a, it's a paper that presents a very appealing way of thresholding a, a graph uh, of a brain. So uh, first, chronotomic, what I mean, um, the following. To construct a brain network, we need to have a few pieces in place together. Um, first, we have uh, to have the brain signal. So um, in this study, uh, it's EEG, could have been fMRI, could have been uh, many stuff, but here it's EEG. Then we need to segment the data and calculate uh, some sort of connectivity measure. Uh, this creates a graph, right? In this study, it's a PLV, phase locking value. So once we have a graph with a segment of data, what we do is we create more graph with more segment of data. We can then uh, calculate some metric on the graph like uh, global efficiency. So if we if we take the graphs as um, time series, right, uh, multi-dimensional time series, and we extract one a number from each of the graph, we get the time series that we see below, and this is a chronotomic. So to summarize, we have a brain signal which lead to a graph which lead to a particular metric. The, most, the main issue in most uh, graph theory research uh, in neuroscience uh, lie in the construction of the graph, right? Uh, there are two main things we, uh, we can do. We can either take the fully weighted graph, uh, but there are some um, theoretical um, uh, contraindication that the uh, brain uh, should not be fully weighted. And uh, uh, if you don't want to have it fully weighted, you need to threshold it in some way. And this is the subject of uh, this uh, paper, is how to threshold uh, this thing properly. So um, we're going to do a small overview of the paper. We're not going to go into too much depth because it's, uh, there's a lot of stuff in it. Um, so we're going to go into the thresholding problem formulation. So what, what problem do we have with thresholding? Uh, we're going to go to the uh, main method, which is orthogonalized minimal spanning tree. So we're going to see what is this thing. Um, we're going to go into the actual method of the paper. Then we're going to see some result. And finally, I'm going to walk you through some MATLAB code um, to get you started using it. Because the other, the other give the the uh, some source code uh, for this analysis um, that they did, which is uh, uh, really great for them. So let's start with the thresholding uh, problem formulation. So, um, like I said before, a fully weighted graph is not the true network uh, since brain area are interconnected via sparse anatomical connection. So this is not a law, but it's something that Sporn has said in 2011, um, and he's kind of the lead uh, researcher in the, the area of graph theory for brain. Um, so the consensus is that you have to threshold your graph. You cannot just leave the weight like this and do your analysis, uh, if you want to create a true brain graph network of functional connectivity, you need to threshold it. So thresholding problem is how and what connection to remove, because you're going to have to remove stuff, from a full weighted graph to create a true network. So it's not a trivial problem because there's different ways you could do it. Uh, there's mainly two types of, of family of thresholding techniques. There are the arbitrary thresholding techniques, and uh, that those are the most used, and then there are the data-driven thresholding techniques. Um, the OMST um, technique we're going to see today uh, fall into the second category. So let's look at this technique. So what, what is an orthogonalized minimal spanning tree? Uh, first, what's a spanning tree, right? So this is a spanning tree. If, this, if the node over here were brain region and the edge were, were connection, a spanning tree is a graph where all nodes are connected and there's no cycle. So if you were to do this and uh, make a connection over here, that's not a spanning tree anymore, right? But if you see here, there's many ways of connecting this whole thing. You could remove this connection over here and just put the connection over there. So there's there's many ways of, of constructing this. If you want to have the minimal spanning tree, um, you choose the spanning tree to be the one with the smallest uh, number of total edges. Great, so now what is an orthogonal minimal spanning tree? Um, it's this process. You create your first minimal spanning tree, right? You save that and you remove all edge used in the first one. So here, what you will do, you remove all of those black ones, right? And then you're left with something that is smaller. Then you create a second minimal spanning tree, right? With uh, Without the, the first one uh, edges. 
and then you save that and you remove all edges and then you repeat for how long you want right and now it's orthogonal in the sense that no common edge between there's no common edge between mst and then you're just gonna um, uh, add uh, accumulate all of those edges uh, into uh, your orthogonal minimal spanning tree right so it's a combination of multiple minimal spanning tree so those are minimal spanning tree that uh, we saw in the uh, we will see in the the study uh, at the top is uh, when the participant has the high open and in the bottom i believe is uh, uh, part when the participant has the eye closed um so you see that there is something that is different between the two and that um you have a, a different proportion of high weight uh, edges because like the red means a high weight and uh, blue means low weight so you don't have only high weight you also have a uh, low weight so that's what it looked like if we look at the, uh, some pseudo code this is not like the actual code in the um in the um library that they provide but i i, I figure that it's easier to understand when um uh, it's a bit more um pseudo code than actually matlab implementation um there are it's it's way too long to 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 um to look at so let's have a quick idea about what is the the omst uh, method so you start with the functional connectivity matrix right here it's plv right um and then what you do the first thing you do is you inverse it right? this is an important step because what, what i mean by inverse is that instead of having um a, a, a weight of a strength strength of connection you can have a distance of functional connection um, so it's posited that uh, two regions that have a high uh, functional connectivity between them are closer together um, in a sense of, uh, of, uh, of a functional uh, functional uh, distance. They have a smaller functional distance. So we're tr trying to create a, a graph where um, these two nodes, if they were um, uh, had a high edge, a uh, high um, weight between them in the functional connectivity, they will have a low distance in the in this kind of uh, inverse uh, matrix. Um, why we do this is because we want to use the minimal spanning tree method and want to favor uh, connection which are functionally close together. Um, if you're going to look, uh, it's not all red everywhere, right? We have some lower edges connection. Um, we will see why after that. So uh, you get this, you create the dummy OMST, and then you will you will have the same number of, of nodes as uh, this one. So here we're using a uh, GCC matrix, right? Instead of a GCC list. So here this is uh, an GCC matrix and we're gonna um, fill it up um, with the MST down there. Um, then you calculate the total degree of this thing, right? The, in, the, the inverse PLV. Um, so this you're gonna use to, to assess the quality of the graph that you're creating. Um, so this whole methodology, right, try to maximize the quality of the graph, define as follow. So we try to find the highest G, which is the global efficiency minus the cost. So this need to be maximal. And the cost is uh, the current graph total degree. So this, uh, the one that we can calculate down there, um, divide by the full weight graph degree. So this guy. So we're always going to do uh, the current graph the total, the total degree divided by this. This will be the cost. We'll put it over here. And we calculate the global efficiency and then we do the minus this and if we get better than before right by adding another edge uh, we keep it up if we get uh, worse the quality ceases to increase uh, we stop um, so this is the optimization so here i'm calculating my first quality right so calculate the global efficiency and minus the the cost here which is the degree of the current omst divided by total degree and then this while loop will continue until uh, the quality is uh, uh, not increasing anymore, right? So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to get the the minimal spanning tree in whatever is left in the inverse PLV, right? You get that. And then the trick is that you're going to add one connection at a time until, um, uh, until either the MST is done or the quality doesn't go up. So you take the best connection, you put it there, right? So this is what this thing is, is this while loop is, is checking. Uh, you're going to swap the old quality first and then you're going to add the best edge from the MST into the OMST over here, right? Don't, don't pay too much attention about the parameters and stuff. Um, it's just for demonstration purposes. Then you remove the best edge from the MST by, by 
putting it to infinity or something like that. Um, that's what you do, and then you're going to calculate the new quality value. So this is the new quality, and it's the same formula as over here, right? And you're going to calculate on the OMST, because that's what we, we, we've just added to. Um, and then if the quality ceases to increase, you stop, and then you, you break, and then this quality also will, will, will break, so they will break over here. And then the last thing you do before you iterate in this uh, first while loop is that you're going to replace the MST edge with infinity, right? From the old whole whole thing in MST over here. Um, right here, if you see the new quality, um, if the new quality it was bad, your MST will, will be like slightly worse than one step before. And there's an extra strap to ensure that uh, we, we will be better. Um, and then you're going to replace it uh, over here or something like that. But the, don't pay too much attention to the details over here. This is a general idea. So um, this is the, the kind of cost that you're trying to maximize. Well, actually, this is the quality that you try to maximize. Um, and this is a curve from um, another method uh, from Sporn, I think. And this was um, the uh, iterative thresholding technique, I believe. And the, the max global cost efficiency is here. And uh, this these guys method is over here, which is clearly better. Um, so this they, they say that uh, the, this, their, their method have a higher quality than uh, this one. Uh, good, so let's look at the paper now. Let's see what, the, what they, they have been doing and how they are assessing that the method is actually better. Um, so they used a open source data set. So it's the BCI of 101 healthy subject recording to the baseline condition, which is one minute eyes open, one minute uh, eyes closed. Um, so there's only one session for, well, actually there's only two minutes for each subject, that's it. So they did a bunch of stuff. So they, they notch filter, this is standard cleaning techniques. So they notch filter it. They did a single subject data whitening with a PCA to remove much of the virus that was problematic and then they, they remove artifact over here um yeah so what they did then they process it by filtering right so they uh, they took only these um uh frequency bands so um they're gonna they're gonna repeat you'll see the chronectomic on each of these frequency bands and then they're gonna use this as a brain fingerprint uh, we're gonna see that afterwards so this is just some general filtering techniques uh, and then they calculate functional connectivity on each of these band passed uh, data set. So um, they started with phase locking value. This is the definition of it. Doesn't really matter what it is, but it's like um, how much, like can, you can think about it as how much two uh, uh, electrodes are, um, uh, are functionally connected through the phase. That's what you should be thinking about. And then uh, there's just one, one uh, extra step here is that they, they get only the imaginary part of the PLV to um, account for volume conduction. Um, so yeah, that's what they did. That, that's how this is how their their graph is structured. It's a graph of phase locking value. Good. So um, they window the data like we saw in the beginning, and uh, they they increase the time step of uh, to twenty millisecond, and um, the width of the window is ten cycle of each frequency band. So you see here they have different frequency bands. Um, and they want to have 10 cycle of each of them. So you're going to get different uh, size of, um, of, of windows, um, but they all move from 20 milliseconds. So you're going to get roughly a similar, um, uh, you're going to get exactly similar um, uh, chronotomic um, length. Um, the network metric that they got after the uh, graph construction phase, they look at the global efficiency. Um, this is what they use for their brain figure printing um, a task which is what we're going to see um, in a few so this is what global efficiency uh, look like um, yeah just a measure uh, of um, just a way of characterizing the graph um, if we look at the, the threshold in technique that they um, um, they assessed uh, we have those six so we have the global cost efficiency which is a data driven uh, technique um, we have the just uh, algorithm uh, which has to do with the uh, um, uh, smallest weight, uh, smallest path between two uh, nodes. Uh, so it's posited that uh, the smallest path between two nodes is where the information will flow. Um, we have the absolute threshold in technique, we have the proportional threshold, the mean degree, which are all three um, 
arbitrary kind of um, thresholding technique. And finally, we have OMST. So um, the glow, the DC is the maximization of uh, cost efficiency equal global efficiency minus the cost. Here, kind of like with what we have in the OMST uh, pseudocode, however, this is uh, with iterative uh, thresholding, um, I believe. This is the one that we, we saw. Uh, this is um, another data-driven uh, algorithm. Those two are data-driven. This one is also data-driven. This favor uh, smallest path between two, um, two nodes. Uh, we have the absolute, so we, we set a percentage of the strongest connection that we want to keep. Uh, we have the proportional that says uh, we want to keep a ratio of 10 to 10 to 1 of strongest uh, edges. Um, this is arbitrary. And we have the mean degree, which is uh, keeping the same mean degree per graph across group and task. Um, so that's the, the what we have. There's different. There's there's a lot of way of doing all of this. Um, for example, absolute we could have taking only the uh, uh, x smallest weight, um, but this we took the, the the highest weight. Same thing for proportional. The different proportional that we can do, um, but those are the six uh, graph that graph holding technique that we we tested. So the decoding task is the following. Uh, you take the threshold graph and you calculate the nodal global efficiency across time. So what you do, uh, then use that time series to do, uh, they did like some pseudo statistical machine learning setting to, to do some brain figure printing experiment. Um, you are going to see in the next figure what, what the, I mean by that. So they have a data set of n minus one time series, right? And then they use a similarity index between the n minus one time series and the holdout time series. So they want to, ch to check um, from this data set which one look similar to the holdout one, which is one participant. Um, if you pay close attention, we have one minute of data. So if you remove and we have one, one, one set of data per participant, so they had to cut in half the, min the minute um, to do the, the, the similarity index thing. Um, it's not optimal. I think it's a bit, uh, yeah, not optimal. And then they assess the performance of the threshold link scheme using a confusion matrix. So let's look at graphically what I mean by that. See, we have all of the um, band paths over here. We have the uh, time series of the global efficiency. And then for each of them, there is some kind of similarity uh, index that is calculated. Doesn't matter what it is. Um, but you, you do that for all of the subject. And you see here, the subject N is actually cut in half because it's this other half is over here, right? And they're trying to find, those two are not the same, right? But if you were to pass this part over here or over here, depending, um, it will be the one full time series. Um, and then they just decided which participant was it uh, based on um, the similarity index. So they also used the fMRI data set to do a test, uh, test in there to work in a test reach test setting. Uh, won't discuss here, but I think this is the, um, I think this is the, the part that was uh, stronger. So let's look at the result. Um, if you look at all of the techniques, um, the GC and the OMST uh, allow small weight, which is super interesting because um, in my studies, what we found was that small weight are actually important for detecting consciousness. Um, so if I have a, a thresholding technique like absolute, which completely wipe them out, my uh, my machine learning pipeline will be not that great compared to something that is uh, fully weighted or uh, at a different thresholding technique. So thresholding techniques have um, uh, an effect on all of everything that is downstream of them. Um, so GC and OMST have a, high, uh, a more um, even spread, uh, OMST a bit more. And this has to do with the minimal spanning graph that we're trying to do. So if a node is, is weakly connected to everything, um, its connection will always be there. So we have those seven or eight um, um, shortest path line connection. Um, if we look at the metric, the, the, GC, the global efficiency, here, this is some, some eyeballing stuff. Um, they are different, right? So the thresholding technique, even though they come from the same data, um, when, when they, they are applied, uh, you get different time series, which is interesting, right? It means that the, the whatever you add will uh, create very, very different um, 
uh, graph topology um, but if you look closely here it's not the same scale for those one so there's, there's maybe an issue of, of uh, visualization but the, the key idea here is that they are different uh, if we look at the meat of the result we get 99% accuracy for OMSC and 100% sometime if you fuse eyes open and eyes closed so what does that tell us compared to the other ones is that um, OMSC are highly recognizable between subjects like super super recognizable compared to GCE method, SPL, uh, the JISC algorithm absolute professional mean degree right so um, yeah but that's weird if you get like 100% 90% accuracy on the whatever task uh, there's might be some red flag um, you might be modeling noise or something like this I don't know what it is I don't know like what what made this go to 100% um, but something is highly recognizable between subjects with this technique um, let's look at the code just to get the hang of it and and, and understand what what's happening um, it might be a bit daunting to just jump in into uh, some other researcher code base. I have a video on that, how to do it, and it's actually with this um, um, this library. But let's jump into the actual clean library. All right. So let's look at the code. Um, it's from uh, this guy. Um, what's his name? Stavros Dimitriadis. Um, the code can be found over here, uh, found over here topological filtering network. Um, it's great, the, the, everything is there to, to work. It's a bit difficult to parse because there's a lot of stuff and a lot of stuff are not uh, that useful. Um, I'm talking about these guys, the, a dot, uh, the dot .asv. Um, there's a bunch of stuff that you don't really need to dig into because it's it's coming from another toolbox, print kind of toolbox. Um, and the readme is not optimal, I would say. So what I did was I cleaned it up a bit. Um, I, I made a better, I made a readme actually. And that explained a bit what all of these files are. So um, if you use any of these, you have to um, um, put the, the, pre, the, the precise um, uh, reference in your paper, uh, especially this one, there's a brain quantity toolbox. So if you just take the, 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 the um, function and just use it without knowing about this toolbox um, you are miss uh, referencing and there's also this guy uh, where uh, th these people are using uh, his code so um, just be aware of this you the requirement you need to have the bioinformatic toolbox otherwise it will just crash that's the abstract if you want to learn a bit more this is the structure of my code base if you don't like it just make a pull request we can change it um, so I have the example folder where it's stuff that you actually need to run. Is this thing that he, he wrote? Um, we have the lib folder which contains stuff that you don't really need to understand and just use, uh, because the code is actually using those libraries. And then this is the meat of it. It's where um, the threshold the directory is where everything is that you need to construct your thresholding. Um, that's pretty much that. Uh, if you look at, um, yeah. That, that's what we have and those are uh, uh, like the global efficiency stuff that this is like mostly what they they wrote um, and the thing that matter for us is the OMST stuff over here this is weighted directed weighted undirected and if you click on it you have all of the guide documentation it's well uh, written so you can just walk through it if you need to understand deeper um, the, the uh, section that we actually gonna look at is the example there's two files here, memo and memo run threshold scheme. I'm not sure what this is. Um, it's not functional, but he put it there. So you can ask him a question if you want. And um, this is the one that we actually um, care about more. Uh, basically what it is, is you have the input graph, right? Here they're just doing a random stuff. So if you want to use the, the whole methodology with all of the thresholding technique, you just need to plug in your graph over here, PLI, weighted PLI, um, AC whatever you can all put them there and then run it it, it should work if you have an end by end graph um, so this is how they do the absolute thresholding the proportional thresholding so if you want to learn more you go there and there and it's in the threshold it's source threshold uh, folder this is how they do the mean degree uh, this guy is this guy I believe and DC is, is this one right so this is the iterative threshold absolute thresholding 
um, yep yeah, so this is how they do it and then um, the actual thing that matters is this one threshold OMST uh, GCE where it directed and uh, there's different thresholding you could do um, depending on if you have a weighted directed, uh, weighted undirected, binary undirected, binary directed, weighted directed. Um, but I, I feel like if you have a binary graph, you already thresholded. Um, so, well, uh, everything is here. You just need to dig a bit and then just plug and uh, mix and match the stuff that they are uh, provided to you in order to finish your analysis. Uh, but uh, most of it's already written. So this is how you run it. Uh, this is the, the, the function you need to run. Um, and if you look over here, actually the last thing he did was um, proving his code base. So you have the GC uh, weighted and directed, fast and very fast. I have no idea what the difference between those three are. Uh, you can dig up into the code, but uh, just be aware that those are there. Um, and that's it. So I'm going to put the, the link of the code in the description, uh, but this is fairly straightforward to follow. All right. So in conclusion, I'm not too convinced, like 99% accuracy on brain fingerprinting uh, might mean we are modeling noise with a graph. I will have much preferred to have a multiple um, test retest setting. Um, however, it's not possible if you use open source data. I understand that. Uh, the fMRI results are more convincing, though. I like them uh, better. Um, basically what you see is this, um, the metric, it's just a me stuff, uh, it's just like metric consistency across scan, right? And you have like a lot of scan of the same guy. And the idea was that uh, if you scan someone multiple times, you should have similar metric uh, across time. And uh, OMST has the highest um, intra-class correlation coefficient compared to all the other ones. Uh, so I'm more inclined to, to try to want to test this method. Um, so I think it's a worth a try. It's not co too complicated to implement, even though that, I I even more that we have the the um, some great uh, code to to use. Um, it would be nice though to compare the threshold technique in a rigorous machine learning setting, just to see if like um, um, it make the graph that we're creating more brain like um, than before. So that's it for today. I hope uh, you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, just post them in the comment section. And have a great week.